For years, Apple has been developing a complicated system of gestures for multitasking between multiple apps on your iPad. Today we're going to take a look at those systems, see how they work now, and take a look at what changes may be coming in the future. Let's start by taking a look at how it works right now by using an example. Let's say you're going to plan a trip to Peru. You're switching between navigating through all the places you want to go in Peru using maps, researching things to do on TripAdvisor, then deep diving in Safari. And you are putting all of your findings together in a keynote presentation. So you arrange your apps like this. You start by wanting to put Safari and Keynote in split view. To do this, you open either app, then swipe up from the bottom of your screen just a little bit to reveal the dock. This is where you can find the other app you're looking for, but since I don't see it there, I will instead search the app library. Once I find it, I can drag it to either side of the left or right of Safari and it will snap into split view. From there, I can slide the bar in the middle of both apps to the left or right to readjust how much space each pane uses. Now let's open an app in Slideover. To do this, once again, swipe up just a little bit from the bottom of the screen to open the dock. Find the app you're looking for and drop it on the bar in between apps. In my case, I'm gonna use Maps. This will give you a floating non-resizable window that you can move to either the far left or right of your screen using the dots at the top of the window. To hide the window, slide it all the way to the edge of either side, and to get it back, swipe in from the, that respective side. We'll take a look at those three dots in more detail later. Another interesting thing about this floating window is the fact that it has its own multitasking menu. So if I were to drop another app on top of this floating window, it switches to the new app. In my case, I'm dropping in TripAdvisor. If you notice, at the bottom of the floating window, there's another home bar. If you swipe up here, you can see all the other apps you have added to slide over and easily close them. You can quickly switch between them by swiping left and right on the home bar. Otherwise, you can see the apps you have open with slide over by launching the regular multitasking and looking to the far right. The last multitasking feature to highlight is PIP or picture in picture. This feature puts what you are watching in a box that slides into one of the four corners of your screen, allowing you to move freely around your iPad with the video still playing. To use this feature, click the picture in picture button in the video player. However, some apps that support PIP don't have a dedicated button, so you will have to swipe up to close the app while the video is still playing, and it will automatically pop into PIP mode if that app supports it. But once in PIP, you can click on the video for playback controls or to open and go back to the app and a full screen video player. So now you have four apps on screen exactly how you like them. But what if you need to replace an app or rearrange them? One way is by using the three dot menu at the top of every window where you can choose to move the window into full screen, split view, or slide over. Another way is by dragging the windows around using those same three dots. The last way is by entering into multitasking by swiping up halfway from the bottom of the screen. Here you can readjust how they are arranged and even close certain parts of a window by swiping up as usual. If in multitasking and you see an icon of a double stacked windows next to an app name, then that app has more than one window open, but we'll talk more about that later. However, no matter which multitasking view you are in, you can always drag an icon over a window pane to replace the app that's currently there. It will just move that app into a full screen window in the background. Or if you are in full screen and you try switching to another multitasking view, it will prompt you to choose an app from your home screen to fill that space. The last multitasking feature I would like to highlight is multiple window support. Using this feature, you can create multiple windows of a single application like you can on a desktop computer. Although the way it's implemented is a little tricky since it's different for each app. So I'm going to point out how to use this feature in Safari, Mail, and Messages. Starting with Safari, if you open the browser and multiple tabs, you can drag a tab either to the left or right of the full screen window and the window will snap into split screen view. 
from there, you can rearrange the two windows however you like. If we switch to mail, we can create a new window by dragging a message to either the left or right of the screen to once again snap into split view. When you create a new message, it automatically comes up in a new window. In this case, you have the three dots at the top of the window making it clear you have other options for rearranging the window on your screen. Then in messages, you can drag a message thread to either side of the screen to create a split view. But with all these windows floating around, it can be easy to lose things. So when opening an app from the home screen that already has multiple windows open, you get a little dock of the windows open in the background that you can switch to. You can also long press on an app from your home screen and go to show all windows. Here you can see all the windows you have open, create a new one, or even close all of them. Lastly, each of these windows appears individually in multitasking. So for most people, this is how to use multitasking, unless you have an M1 iPad. In this case, when you update to iPadOS 16 in the fall, you will have a new multitasking feature called Stage Manager. When you toggle this command and control center, it will convert iPadOS's traditional multitasking features into something that feels more Mac-like. I haven't tried out this feature for myself, nor will I be able to because I have an unsupported iPad. More on that later. But when the feature is enabled, all the windows you have open on the screen will become floating windows that you can freely move around your screen and resize. You can even organize windows into groups that may help keep them organized. And once you turn Stage Manager off, everything gets back to the old multitasking mode with split screen and slide over views. I can't say much more about the feature because as I said, I haven't used it myself, nor can I, so I will leave some links below to some beta testers who have shown off all that it can do. Just keep in mind that this feature is still a beta feature, and a lot can change before it's released in the fall. Now, let's talk more about support for this feature. In order to use it, you will need an iPad powered by an M1 chip or higher. At the moment, this means you will need a 5th generation iPad Air or 5th generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro or a 3rd generation 11 inch iPad Pro. That's only 3 iPads. And it's unclear why Stage Manager doesn't support more than that. Apple has released many statements on the technical aspects of the feature and explained why it has such limited support, but most have been proven wrong one way or another. And if the A12 can run a full version of macOS, then I would imagine iPads running the A12, A13, and A14 chips should be compatible of running Stage Manager. After all, it's the same multitasking feature as every other iPad, just with the added ability to resize windows. To conclude, I started writing this article with the intention of being critical of iPadOS's multitasking features. In the end, I found them to be pretty intuitive and a great use of the smaller screen sizes of the iPad. Is it perfect? No. I still think that it's more tedious than it's worth in most cases. But when I do need those multitasking features, I will definitely feel way more comfortable with them and I hope you feel the same. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have you used any of iPadOS's multitasking tools before? Do you like them? Do you hate them or have any suggestions for Apple? Let me hear about that in the comments below. While down there, check out the links in the description to learn more about multitasking on iPadOS. And once again, thank you so much for watching and we will catch you in the next one.